Orbi RBK752 and EuroPro6 are two rock solid systems and you can't go wrong with either. EuroPro6 is dead simple to install and it does a great job of balancing great performance, stability, and it's loaded with a bunch of software features inside the phone app. Orbi RBK752 offers similar speeds as Euro, but the phone app is just not very good. But Orbi is definitely better for power users who want a web-based interface or just people who want extra ports. And if you wanna know how I reach my conclusion, keep watching as I go through four different categories and then wrap things up with a which one is best for you section. Euro's installation is the quickest and the easiest of any mesh system that I've ever tested. The instructions are easy to follow because it walks you through even the simplest steps. It tells you where to place the nodes and it offers tips to improve the signal if things aren't working correctly. I've installed Euro over a dozen times and in my latest install, I got two Euro Pro 6 nodes installed and running on the latest firmware in just five minutes. Orbi's setup typically takes longer than Euro but the current setup process is straightforward with the phone app. In my latest install, I got two Orbi RBK 752s running in under 10 minutes, and then an additional five minutes to get them on the latest firmware. In previous setups, I used to get errors when powering on the router and the satellite node simultaneously, but that doesn't really happen anymore. My maximum internet speed is 117 megabits per second, and with two Euro Pro 6 nodes, I was able to max out that speed basically anywhere I went inside of my house. Euro Pro 6 has an AX4200 rating, which means that it's capable of more than a gigabit per second internet speed. But that's just not a realistic number when connected wirelessly in a mesh setup. But you will get gigabit speeds when your device is plugged directly into the Euro, assuming that you pay for gigabit speeds. To get a better idea of real life wireless speeds, I set up an iPerf 3 server on my MacBook Pro and connected it to my Euro Pro 6 with Ethernet to test the throughput speeds. My home is 1200 square feet, but my testing locations and home layout are not the same as yours. So just use my numbers as a baseline. And I tested with a Wi-Fi 6 enabled iPhone 12 Pro. So when testing for my 10 designated locations, I averaged 540 megabits per second with a two Euro Pro 6 node configuration. And when I was just 10 feet from that main router, I average 742 megabits per second. All Euro systems thrive with device switching and overall stability. And Euro Pro 6 uses a true multi-channel mesh network, which means that all three bands that it has are used for the backhaul and for the communication between your devices and the node. Euro's ability to keep the connection on your device smooth when you go from one node to the next node is unparalleled, you'll never even notice. Euro systems do a lot of work behind the scenes to keep your system running smoothly. I don't know how to measure this with data, but I never notice when my phone switches from a different node. So when I go from my kitchen out to my back deck, my phone switches to my porch node, but I never notice, it's just a smooth transition. And this can't be said of most mesh systems. And in my three years with Euro, I've never really noticed any cutouts. Euro has a feature called band steering that tries to push all devices that support five gigahertz onto that channel to increase performance. I bought the Euro Pro 6 on the launch day and it's been smooth sailing the entire time I've owned it. But some Reddit users were experiencing slow speeds in the first few weeks that it was released. And this is kind of the norm for early mesh systems. By most accounts, the latest firmware version 6.2.1 is stable and working for almost everybody. And the great part about Euro is that they're known for pushing out updates quickly when they notice problems and they're super responsive inside of the community. The Orbi 752 has the same AX4200 rating as Euro Pro 6. And a two node configuration should cover 5,000 square feet just like the two node configuration from the Euro Pro 6. When testing from my 10 designated locations, I averaged 452 megabits per second in a two node configuration. And when I was just 10 feet from the main router, I averaged 656 megabits per second. I was surprised that no matter when I tested the Orbi system, I couldn't quite match the Euro Pro 6 in speed. But this is just speed test numbers and I never really noticed this in real life. So sure, Euro Pro 6 performed better in my tests, but this is probably more due to just randomness than anything conclusive. The bottom line is that the Euro Pro 6 and the Orbi 752 should get similar speeds. But if achieving maximum speeds is important to you, I would stay away from both of these systems because neither of them are capable of gigabit speeds 
in a wireless setup. And if you're sold on Orbi and you want the next speed level up, I would take a look at the Orbi 852, which has an AX6000 rating, and that should get you close to gigabit speeds wirelessly. With previous Orbi systems that I've tested, I've noticed bad firmware updates and strange hiccups when moving my phone around the house. And I even had some issues when too many people were all connected to the satellite node simultaneously. But the Orbi 752 is the first Orbi system that I've owned that had no stability issues at all. I've had it installed at my house for six weeks and I didn't notice it once. And that's the highest praise you can have for a Wi-Fi system. I've had a smooth six weeks, but the Reddit and the Amazon reviews aren't quite as favorable as Euros. Orbi could still push out a questionable firmware update at any point and break things. So I would try and avoid the newest firmware update for at least a couple weeks to make sure that nothing will break. The Orbi 752 is a tri-band system just like Euro Pro, but it operates differently. One of the five gigahertz channels is a dedicated backhaul channel that is used exclusively for communication with the other Orbi. So this leaves the other two bands wide open just for your devices. So the node to node communication and the node to device communication stay completely separate. In my past experience, a dedicated backhaul channel typically meant that when you're connected to the secondary node, you'll achieve maximum speed more frequently. But a trade-off is that you lose a little bit of stability. But when comparing the stability of these two systems, I didn't notice a difference this time around. Euro's app is loaded with features, but it's easy for anybody to use. A profile for each person in your household can be created with family profiles. Just group each person's devices together, then control them by pausing or scheduling access for the whole group of devices. It's set up well for parents to limit when their kids should be on the internet and how long they should be on. Advanced configurations like reservations, port forwarding, and DNS settings are all available inside the app. While you can't tinker with as many settings as you can with Orbi, Euro is really smart with the defaults that it chooses for you. You can track your bandwidth usage in real time or see a cumulative number on a per week basis. So what are the downsides? Euro needs the cloud to operate, as do most mesh systems. And there's no web-based interface either, but it's tough to see why you would need that with how well done the phone app is. And unfortunately, Euro Pro 6 is missing a couple features that are found on the previous generations of Euro. It doesn't have smart queue management or HomeKit support yet, but both of these are in the works. Euro Secure is an optional subscription service for $3 a month. You get better security, advanced parental controls, Activity Center, Safe Filtering, and built-in ad blocker. EuroSecure gives you a more advanced bandwidth usage interface where you can see on a per day and per month basis. EuroSecure is a great bet for parents who want more control over which sites their kids can view. But I don't recommend it for any non-parents unless the extra bandwidth features are useful to you. Lots of the time when I go to launch the Orbi app, a message that says router not set up appears and then I just dismiss it and everything's working fine. It appears just to be a communication lag between the router and the app, but it's still annoying. In the times that I find there's no lag, I'm usually logged out of my account. So the process of launching the app almost never goes smoothly. And once you're in the app, the interface looks terrible. And there's not much you can do other than name the devices, pause them, or reboot the system from the app. And the Orbi app doesn't have native parental controls either. And you can't even edit the port forwarding or DNS settings. So what's the good news? Orbi has a web-based interface that lets you customize anything you want, just like you can with a regular Netgear router. Another bonus is that there's no reliance on the cloud to run. So if your internet goes down, you'll still have access to your network. Orbi has a traffic meter that logs your bandwidth for a week or a month, but it's confusing hard to read, and the data can't be filtered. But we're still not done with the bad news. Orbi has an optional subscription service called Netgear Armor for $70 a year to protect you from phishing threats and warn you of bad sites. But unfortunately, each time you open the app, there are obnoxious ads for this, and when you first install your Orbi, you're automatically opted in to their free trial, and they don't really give you a choice. And to make matters worse, the service isn't very good. It blocked a lot of legitimate sites that I was trying to access and just made my life a lot harder. I've already mentioned that Orbi doesn't have parental controls, but they do have a solution for you. Netgear partnered with Disney, so for $5 a month, you can subscribe to Circle with Disney to get most of the same parental features that come for free with Euro. The downside, aside from the $5 a month, is that you'll need to operate with two apps, the Circle with Disney and the Orbi app. 
You can't do everything inside the Orbi app. The EuroPro 6 units are bigger than the previous EuroPros, but they're smaller than Orbi by a lot. They can be put anywhere in the house and they'll stay out of the way. There are two Ethernet ports on EuroPro 6, so this gives you three total ports to work with for accessories. The Orbi RBK752 is massive and it's ugly. Compared to EuroPro 6, it's four times taller and three times bigger by volume. You can't hide these nodes away easily. With Euro, the nodes are interchangeable. With Orbi, there's a router that has an ethernet port for internet and then three additional ethernet ports. And then there's a satellite node with two ethernet ports. So this gives you five ports to nerd out on in the two piece Orbi configuration. Get Euro Pro 6 if you want a network that just works without you noticing it. The initial setup takes just a few minutes, the parental controls are easy to use, and the nodes are a nice size where you can kind of hide them away. Euro's network is typically more stable than Orbi's, but in my testing, I didn't notice a difference. But surprisingly, even with the same AX4200 rating, the Euro Pro 6 outperformed the Orbi 752 in almost all speed tests. Get Orbi 752 if you're a power user, who wants a lot of ethernet ports, or you want a web-based interface that's loaded with customizations. Unfortunately, Orbi's app is slow, has a bunch of annoying pop-ups, and it's just missing a bunch of basic features. But ideally, if your network's running properly, you shouldn't really have to touch the app. So now let's get into the other options. If you don't care about the benefits of Wi-Fi 6, the Orbi RBK50 is a great option and will provide similar speeds. It's a Wi-Fi 5 system, and it's about $100 less than the 752. Because there aren't a ton of Wi-Fi 6 devices in the wild yet, you probably won't even notice a difference. But if I'm already spending $300, I'd rather just pay the extra 100 to get the Wi-Fi 6 model. Euro Pro 6 and Orbi 752 are great systems, but they're not great for gigabit because you're gonna max out around 600 megabits per second when connected wirelessly. If achieving max speeds on your gigabit internet is important to you, check out the Orbi 852 for $650. If I had to guess, it should reach the maximum throughput of 850 megabits per second when on a Wi-Fi 6 capable phone. How about the other Euro options? Well, there are a ton, but the Euro Pro 6 is the best they have. But if you're not paying for gigabit internet speeds, the Euro 6 will be a great bet for you and is a great way to save money. In my test with the Euro 6, I was able to average around 350 megabits per second. And if you wanna learn more about that system, Check out the video I did earlier this year where I covered all four Euro systems. So that's all I have for this video. And I just bought the Deco X20 and as soon as I finish uploading this video, I'm gonna set that up and then I will compare that to the Euro 6. And that will probably take me about a month to test out. So in the meantime, if you have questions about the Euro or the Orbi, or you just think I missed something, let me know down in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Thanks for watching this one, I'm out.